It's new. It's exciting. It's Windows 365. But what can it do for you? It's time to go deep. Hi there, YouTubers. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer. You know, this week, with all the hype that surrounded Windows 365, I thought it was about time that we sat back and took a closer look at some of its specifications, some of its features, and more importantly, what these things can do for you. So without any further ado, if you've not subscribed, of course, go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss on out on uh, anything. Now, as always, I love your questions. So please get those questions down below. What your comments, what do you think of Windows 365? Do you think it's going to be a revolution or indeed do you think it's going to be evolution for Windows? Can Windows survive with the cloud PC? So without further ado, let's take a look. So let's take a look at some of the secrets of Windows 365, which were revealed. So we're going to talk about what exactly is Windows 365. We'll talk about those hardware requirements, the plans and licensing for it, management and deployment, uh, 365 and Azure interoperability, and the almost very important question, when can I get my hands on it? So availability, of course. So first up then, what can you do? What is Windows 365? Well, for the first time, essentially what Microsoft have done is they've rebranded their virtual desktop. But the, one of the issues that I have with Microsoft Azure, of course, is you can procure Azure virtual machines. We've had that for many years, but it was always on a pay per use. And the more you use, the more you pay. So for the first time now, um, it's you basically it's everything's included. So you have a configuration and you can use it as often as you like, um, which is going to be really great. So um, you can provision, you can procure, deploy within seconds. In fact, it comes with automated updates already included, so you do, don't need to worry about that. It offers users anywhere access to their personal Windows desktop experience. So you can think about people who work in factories, call centers. Um, you know, typically we have these first line worker plans. This is going to be brilliant for these people. Uh, more importantly, you can access it on any device as well. So any, any kind of browser on any device, uh, which again is fantastic. And it's uh, per user pricing as well. So the key benefits here are it differs from Azure, as I said, because you get these persistent or fixed VMs. So it doesn't matter whether you have it on for, you know, 15 minutes or three hours or three days. It's all the same price, which, again, it really needed to evolve for this, certainly in the consumer space anyway. Um, there are multiple price plans, of course, so the more powerful the VM that you run, um, the more expensive it's going to be. So things like power, storage, memory, and so on. Unlike Azure Virtual Desktop, the cloud PC will be available as a flat subscription rate and not as a constantly changing rate fixed on or based on that uh, consumption model, which Microsoft Azure uh, currently has. So how will it integrate with Microsoft 365? Well, this is really where you're going to see the huge amount of integration. Um, so standalone pricing for both Windows 365 um, in terms of the consumer, business and enterprise editions. So um, at the moment, for example, if you've got an E5 subscription, you know that, that you get a Windows 10 license. Um, it, I would be very surprised if you don't get this Windows 365 with that as well. Uh, also, users with Windows Pro endpoints, uh, and if you're on an E3, EMNS, E3, or E5 licenses, again, um, you're going to get this added to your plan. All right. Um, again, non-Windows Pro endpoints. So if you're using uh, virtual desktop experiences, if you're using enterprise mobility and security, again, as long as you've got the F3, E3 and E5 subscriptions, then you're going to be uh, okay with that. 
Um, now, initially, these were the various um, kind of machine offerings. So you can go from the very basic kind of um, one CPU, two gigabytes of uh, RAM and 64 gig of RAM. And you can see that this is really kind of targeting those first line workers, for example, call center staff. Um, you know, I want to work anywhere, anytime, and I just want to access it through a browser. So traditional, the, the traditional way of deploying that obviously involved quite a lot of hardware, quite a lot of configuration on the IT Pro side. And then you can see, depending on the type of business that you want, you can scale right up to 32 gigs of RAM, 128 gig of hard drive. Now, you know, I was looking at that and I was thinking, you know, that half a, half a terabyte of disk space. But of course, you're not going to need that amount of disk space because you've got all your apps delivered through Microsoft 365. You've got all your storage in the cloud with Microsoft 365, OneDrive, SharePoint and so on. So there's really no need to have those huge hard drives that you would traditionally have on that traditional PC. So I, it's going to be really interesting to see how um, this space kind of moves forward. Can I upgrade? Absolutely. So this is going to be one of the, the things, you know, so you might, for example, take out a two CPU, four gigabyte, gigabyte RAM machine, and you just find that it's not powerful enough for you. Maybe you've got some very, very high end, powerful line of business applications. So again, you will have that option to upgrade that uh, PC. So what about the admin experience? Well, like I keep mentioning, Microsoft 365 features heavily. So here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you will create your users. You will license those users exactly as the same as you do now. The differences are you will have devices here. So you can see that we've got, um, again, devices were something that were always in, for example, Azure Active Directory, but we didn't really see them in the, my, in the main Microsoft 365 portal. And as you can see, um, they're here now. So all your cloud PCs um, are going to be here. And you can see whether those machines are licensed or whether they're not licensed. So again, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, license those here. And as you can see, it's going to completely link in with those user templates as well. Um, and, and again, you can be able to deploy those devices here. So if I go into a, uh, a user, if I go into Mason's uh, account here, you can see that he's got that Microsoft or that Windows 365 Enterprise license here. Um, and he's got the four CPU 16 gig edition. And again, you will purchase an amount of licenses and assign them exactly the same way that you do in Microsoft 365. And you can combine those licenses. You can upgrade, you can change licensing just as you would uh, today. Now, of course, license management, uh, the number one place to do this, of course, is Endpoint Manager. So Endpoint Manager is in Microsoft 365. I've done many a session on that here. You can have a look at those sessions on my uh, YouTube channel. But you'll notice that Endpoint Manager is that combination of Intune and Endpoint Security. And it's a natural plate progression. So you can see that we've got the, uh, obviously, below the Enroll devices here, you've got all the same features that we've had except for one new feature. The, you've got the Windows 365. So instantly you can see all your cloud PCs in one place. You can see provisioning. So perhaps a user has had a problem with the provisioning, you'll be able to uh, assist them. Um, you'll be able to take images of devices. So if a, you know, a device crashes, it will be seconds to re-enroll that device and get that device back up and running uh, again. Also, you'll have noticed here that it's a hybrid. So I'm often asked, Andy, will I be able to connect to my on-premises Azure Active Directory? Absolutely. Will I be able to use, for example, the um, uh, application proxy to connect to on-premises applications. Absolutely, you'll be able to do that, no problem. 
So um, you can, as with any device, when you create it in Intune, you'll be able to create a provisioning policy. The only difference is it's not on a Windows 10 PC that you need to deploy. It's on a cloud PC. So again, you can choose again the the persona the version of the cloud so is it a first line worker edition is it for the operating system optimization uh, again and you'll have a number of kind of preset uh, images here that you're going to be able to use um and the, can I custom an image? Absolutely. One of the great things about Intune is the fact that you're going to be able to customize everything to meet your requirements. So if you need a particular wallpaper for your um, environment, if you need to lock down certain menu items, exactly the same as if you were working on a regular PC. The only difference is, of course, you're going to be able to manage it from anywhere and the users are going to be able to access it from any location. All right. Now, in terms of different locations, of course, you can configure your networking um, using um, which obviously sits on the backbone of Azure. So, for example, uh, your different uh, virtual networks, you'll be able to create that just as in Azure. And it's interesting that that is also now starting to lead into Intune here, and you can see that here, which is really nice. Um, provisioning policies, of course, once you've created that image, once you've created those settings, you can then deploy that to your teams or your groups of users, and it's instantly available uh, to those uh, folks out there. So once you've created that policy, uh, a night, uh, just review, um, then you go ahead and create the policy. And you can see here, just like you can at the moment, you will see the, the name of the device that it's uh, attached to, the name of the user or the groups of users. Is it licensed? Is it not licensed? Is it provisioned? Is it waiting to provision? And again, it tells you who the user is here. And as always, if you click into one of these, you're going to get that really nice uh, breakdown of, of everything that's going on. So from the end user experience, this is what the end user will see. The end user will just log in. Um, they will then say, yes, I want to connect to this cloud machine. Um, they'll need to approve sign-in, multi-factor authentication, absolutely critical here. So assuming that they've got that, um, the uh, authenticator app on their device, they'll then go and authenticate. And of course, they'll then get their menu here. So this is the Microsoft or oh, so the Windows 365 experience. Uh, again, here, this particular user just has one virtual machine. Um, you can see I can restart the, the cloud PC. I can rename it if the user wants to. It tells me how much RAM I've got, how much storage I've got. And if you, you know, you're a, maybe you work at home. May, I mean, many of us do at the moment. You might even find yourself with multiple uh, different VMs that you will need to use. All right. So the, the great thing about this is you can, you can access this perfect for bring your own device. This is really bring, bring the company's device to you now, really. So uh, again, uh, you know, I mentioned Andy, what about other OSs? Can I connect things like, you know, remote desktop? Absolutely. So you can, there's obviously the various remote desktop apps. So things like the Mac, the iOS, Android, you'll be able literally to access your content, your desktop, your data anywhere on any device. So when you've made that connection for the end user, of course, it will say, hey, you know, um, do you want me to take advantage of local printing? Do you want me to take advantage of, you know, your local files and uh, do transfer, microphone, camera and so on? So it's your choice. You make that decision. And of course, you can remove that at any time. 
then the machines kicks in and hey it's windows 10 initially it will be a windows 10 interface and he will i get the windows 11 interface absolutely 100 percent um by launch i expect everybody will be uh, able to update to the windows 11 experience uh, and as you can see on the top right hand corner it very 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 similar to Microsoft 365. Um, you're going to have your apps there as well. So you can very quickly switch between Microsoft 365 and Windows 365. And the idea is we're going to have just one uh, portal. Okay. Now, if you are on a managed PC, um, again, you can choose um, if you want to install the agent, the Intune agent, um, onto your uh, machine, of course, and get advantage of all those corporate uh, applications. And of course, if you want, if, if you are using managed apps, um, your administrators will be able to send out invites so that you can subscribe to these corporate uh, applications. So there you go. A quick look at Windows 365. There you go. Isn't that awesome? Windows 365. I think it's evolutionary. I think it's going to be a big change. Remember, you saw it here. Okay. Um, hey, listen, I love your feedback and your questions. So get them down below and uh, I'll do my very best to answer them. Okay. And as always, if there's any topics that you're really interested in, you want to know more about something, then again, let me know because I'm currently planning out on my uh, sessions in the future. So thanks very much for tuning in. As always, Go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on anything. Okay, so you stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell, and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.